Page 10, The Holly and the Ivy. It's a Christmas piece. At the top of page 10, they talk about blocked and broken chords. The idea here is it's terminology, it's the words that you might be hearing about or reading about, and this gives you some idea of what they're doing, of what's going on. It's pretty simple. A blocked chord is when you play all the notes of the chord at the same time. Here, like a G chord, C chord, whatever, whatever the chord is. Just play them all at the same time. Just lowering the hand down. Try and get the notes down at the same time. It's not that easy to do. A broken chord is anything else. It's where they're not at the same time. That there's thousands and thousands of patterns of broken chords. It's up to you and your imagination. Here they're going from the bottom, middle, top. Well, I could go down. I could go up and down. I could mix it. I could do all kinds of things. I could do one and then two. That's still a broken chord. Because they're not all down at the same time. Two of them were, but that don't count. Is it? There's all kinds of patterns. And then they talk about the seventh chord having four notes. I've already discussed all that. Uh, let's talk about holly and the ivory, some things I need to point out. I look it over, it's about a page and a half long, approximately. Treble and bass clef, one sharp in the key signature, we're in the key of G major. Make sure you're doing the G major scale, you've heard this lecture before, blah, 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 okay. Three, four time signature, and we have a pickup measure. There's only two eighth notes in that first measure. That's one beat. So the first two beats got to be somewhere, and they are. They're at the bottom, at the bottom of page 11. That's two counts, so we come in on beat three. And we'll take it one hand at a time, make sure I understand what the hands are doing first. Right hand, you're starting here and here. Three and one and three and one and two and three. And then two beats of rest, and then three and one and and then going on, measure five, one, now you reach up here. So really, we come from this position to this position. That's all, because the first line was this position. Now we're up here. We're pretty much going to stay up here for a while. The measure eight, for the eighth notes, during the rest you come back down. And then on measure 13, you're going to go back up to here. So you're coming around a little bit. It's whatever the music needs. Now, the last line on page 11, I'll talk about that later when I put the hands together. Left hand, well, you got the G chord, it's a block chord, and then the C chord. Of okay, and then the 5 7 chord here. See, it's, normally it would go here, but what they've done is they put the D on the bottom. It's just a different arrangement. It's still a 5 7 chord. In here, and that's still a G chord, a one chord, we're just not using all the notes. We don't have to. And then during the rest, before measure five, you come back up here. One, two, three, one, two, rest. Okay, so much for that. Put the hands together. We we'll start here, here, and then left up. That's by itself, and then left hand. And then here, and as you're doing that, you get left hand down, and then through the second line when you play the G, you get the left hand up, get the idea. On these G's, you can do a one, two, one, or experiment if you want to, but you can do a thumb on all of them too if you want, it's up to you. It's good practice to use different fingers on them going to need to someday, but don't have to. Now look out on these pieces that are repetitious, or you see the same pattern again later. They don't always give you the fingering every time. They'll give you the fingering the first time, and it's up to you to remember it. For instance, on measure nine, you get here. Then you get a fifth finger to come down. Well, it's the same thing on measure 16. You hear, you want fifth finger again. They don't give you anything. Well, you're expected to remember from before. Huh. If you don't, pencil it in. Give, put a five there on measure 16 if you need to, need to be reminded. Just be aware music doesn't always give you the fingerings on the passages that happen over and over and over. Let's go down to the measure 21 at the end of page 11. 
with all this mess going on with the eighth notes. What these are, there's just a G chord, a broken G chord, and you're going up the keyboard. So the stems going down are for the left hand, the stems going up are for the right hand. They have RH there to help you out in LH. But the first three notes is the left hand. As you just look at all three notes, it's just a G chord. And then the right hand notes, that's G chord here. And then the left hand notes is a G chord in the same place. Then the right hand gets a G chord. And then the left hand gets a G chord up here. And she's just going up here. And then the last measure, that there's an AVA above that note, so it's up here. Left hand. You just want it one and two and three. Just nice and even. Now you don't have to read the music on this. Once you've figured out what the pattern is, you don't have to look at the music. You can, because you, you gotta look at the keyboard because you're moving around. But that's fine. It's easy to memorize when it's just a broken chord. Well, at least I hope it is. Now, once I have the notes and figuring and all that worked out, then I think about the articulation. Here, it's a very connected piece. Like taking a breath. Just connect it up. You can lift up between the phrasing if you want. These slurred lines, they may or may not be for the phrasing. I'm not sure. Follow the words. Look on measure 13 here. You want to lift up? If you read the words, there's no break there. Rising of the sun and the running of the deer goes all the, if you want to connect it in the music, connect it as far as I'm concerned. So there's different ways of interpreting it. And so some people will lift up for the phrase, other people will connect it. And dynamics MP, mezzo piano, sort of soft, that's melody. These chords need to be soft. However, in the second full major, you see the dice lines going down? Mm -hmm. Some publishers do it, some don't. Sometimes it's a solid line. Sometimes it's a dice line. Sometimes it's a dotted line. Doesn't matter. They're simply telling you the melody is going from one staff to the other. Whatever. The melody. So the top note in the chord. That's melody. They're telling you the melody's going down. So when you do the dynamics, you have to play this as though it's melody. So you play the left hand a little louder there. And then go back to soft. This is soft. That's all that dice line. Music will do this sometimes. And it's hard to do because you can lose the melody in the chord. Do the best you can with it. Then I'll uh, pick up to measure five, you go up to moderately loud. Sort of loud. That's the melody. Keep the left hand soft. Again, that's melody. I pick up to measure 13, that's the measure end of measure 12. Now you go up to loud. The sun came out, I guess. I'm not sure. It's and then the last line, you go back down to moderately loud for all of these. There's no melody here. This is like a coda. You have an introduction. The first line, you see the double bars? It's an introduction. Introduces the piece, sets the mood and the tone and so forth. Well, at the end, you can have a coda, which is kind of a tag on the end of a piece, an afterthought. The piece ends at measure 20. It's over. But this is just an afterthought. There's no melody here, although there could be. There isn't. And just all the same, about moderately loud. Well, when you get into interpreting it, you can adjust that dynamics a little bit and play around with it. As far as the speed goes, well, it's, it's in the middle. If you're going to sing it, Somewhere in there, I think. Now, they've added pedal at the end of this, that last line. You don't need pedal. You can leave it out if you want. 
but if you're going to put it in, push the pedal down right after you play the first eighth note, and you can leave it down for the whole thing and lift the pedal with the note. That's the pedal. If you want to use it, go ahead. It's, it's a nice effect. I don't know that I would use it, but you could use it if you wanted to. Remember the natural accents? One, two, three. One, two, and three, four times is the only natural accent you're going to get. So go to here. Go to here. That's what we have. Put in a retard on at the end if you wanted to. That's interpretation. How do you feel it? Let's play this together very slowly. I'm not going to do any dynamics. I'm just playing the notes and the rhythms. And I'm not going to do the pedal at the end because you hear the notes better without it. I'll give us two counts because we come in on beat three. So we're going to ready go. And we're going to go slow for me at least. <laughs> Ready and go and. Two off. 